mathematicians, this is lesson 10.8, choosing linear, quadratic, or exponential. So in this lesson, they are going to give you a table of values, and you're going to have to tell us, is it linear, is it quadratic, or is it exponential? So it's pretty simple to see from the graphs. The graphs, we know there are three graphs and three different functions. Linear, we have done a ton of. So this one's very simple. Quadratic, we're just starting, and exponential should be a review. So hopefully you remember these three types, and you have them written down if you need to. Put them in your notes. Okay, so determine the type of model that best fits the data. We may examine our xy chart of points. As long as there are constant change in the x values, usually plus one, the change in the y will tell you what the type of function that it is. So here's an example, okay? First check to see if there's a common difference. So here, these are all going up by one, the y's are all going up by four. So this we know right off the bat that this is a linear model. And hopefully you would be able to write the equation if you remember this, okay? Now this one, if there's no common difference, so it went up by, so it's being multiplied by three, if you remember this, this is an exponential model. If it's being times by the same amount each time, it has a common ratio of three. That is an exponential model. And then lastly, if it has, okay, so if you look at this, it's minus 14, minus four, plus six, plus 16, plus 26. This is their first difference. You have to find the first difference. And then the second difference, okay, if you look, they're all adding 10. Each time it's adding 10, okay? This is how you, fun you model a quadratic function. So there's three different types. So you're either adding the same amount each time, you're multiplying by the same amount, that's exponential, and then here you're looking for the second difference. So difference meaning subtraction, so 16 minus 2 is minus 14, and then 2 minus, or 2 to negative 2 is negative 4. And then you look between here and you, sub, and you figure out what's happening again, and it's plus 10. So, graph each set of points. Which model is most appropriate for each set? So if you look at this, they've given you four points. This is pretty simple. This one you can tell right off the bat is an exponential function. This is linear, whoops, missed the point. And here is quadratic. So if I give you a set of points, you should be able to do this fairly simply. Okay, which kind of function best, best models the data below? Write an equation to model the data. So first you're gonna look for a common difference or a common ratio. So I'm gonna look here, okay. That is going up by 1.4. Then it's going up by 4.2. Then it's going up by seven. And then it's going up by 19.8. So then if you look at what's in between here, so I know that this isn't linear. I know right off the bat that this is not a linear function, okay? So it doesn't have a common difference. And then if I look between the two numbers, 4.2 minus 1.4, that is 2.8 of a difference. Seven minus 4.2 is 2.8. And 19, hold on, let me make sure I did this right. 22.4 minus 12.6 is 9.8. I thought something looked funny. And that is 2.8 of a difference. So if we scroll down and we look that their second difference is 2.8, okay, this is how we tell if it's a quadratic function. So this is a quadratic function because the second difference. Now here's how you write the equation. Okay, you know that it's y equals ax squared. 
We know that it has to have an x squared for a quadratic, so everybody knows that. Now, where do they get 5.6 and 2? Well, it just says use a point other than 0, 0. So they just picked any random point on this table, and they picked 2 and 5.6, okay? So now they put 2 in for x and 5.6 in for y, and you solve that equation, and then you can see that your equation is y equals 1.4 x squared. Now, I could add the y-intercept, but the y-intercept from the table is just zero, so I really don't need to add anything on, because the y-intercept is zero, so that would be my c. So it's 1.4 x squared. So this is the most important thing that you're gonna have to do. Okay, here. What kind of function best models the data below? Write an equation. So if I look at this, okay, this is going um, minus 2, minus 1, minus 1 half, minus 1 quarter. And then my second difference, this has a difference of 1, this has a difference of 1 half, so that's not the same. So then I should know that it is an exponential function. Okay, this is getting divided by 2, divided by 2, divided by 2, and divided by 2. So that is called a common ratio. Okay, so now what you figure out is it's getting divided by 2 or 1 half. So they figured out while well, each number is getting so divided by 2 or multiplied by 0.5 is the same thing. So you need to figure out what the multiplier is. So this is the ratio that you need to use. Because we found a common ratio, it appears to be an exponential function. Now, here's how you write those. Here is the, make sure you have this in your notes, y equals a times b to the x. Okay. A is the initial value. So let's go back. What was our initial value? At 0 is 2. So 2 goes in for A, and B is 0.5. So then you just are done. You just have to write it like this. 2 is the starting point, and times 0.5 to the X. Whatever your, you find as the what it's being multiplied by, 0.5, that is here with an exponent on top of it. All right, that's it for your notes.